Hello, I'm River, and welcome to my Monster Hunter World Paint Series. Today, I'll be doing the Sword and Shield Hunter in Rathlos Armor. Start off like any other model, clean up the mold lines, and prime it matte black. I come back and use a matching color, just to cover up any exposed plastic. You'll see this on parts that get complicated or are between the body and the limbs. Red Dragon. Be sure to shake your bottle well, because... Not always going to come out with the appropriate color here. I'll go ahead and I paint all of these scaled bits. You'll find these all over the armor, as well as on the slinger's arms. You don't have to worry about getting the paint anywhere it's not supposed to be. We're going to come back and fix up the pattern a bit, like on the main Rathalos model. Mithril Silver, we're just gonna real quick do all of the metallic bits on the armor. That includes a portion of the chest, the headband, the straps and gauntlets, the metallic under the shoulder guards, back of the chest piece, as well as the hunter's knife. Leave room for the straps, which we're going to paint brown. back of the leg guards, the knee armor, and the thighs. As well as the under portion of the shield straps and the arm guards. Also do the belt buckle and a bit of the belt here. Bugwear brown. Go ahead and I paint all of these straps and pouches on the hunter. You'll see these straps on the hips, as well as the boots. I use this as a base coat for the face as well. Necromancer Cloak. I begin doing the pattern on the armor. These are mainly stripes going from top to bottom. The larger triangular scales are a big part of it as well, such as on the chest. All of these spikes are also this, this dark gray. I put in threes, being the edges and the center of most objects, as well as the tips of all the spikes. The shield as well has several spikes to paint. scaly bit of the sword, as well as the back. Uniform gray. I just real quick dry brush the metallic parts of the shield and the sword. I would have used a normal metal, or maybe a dark color mixed with the metallic. But I thought that the weapon in the game looked more similar to a more matte color, as opposed to a metallic look. Ruddy skin. Go ahead and I just do another coat on the face. I keep it thinned down so it retains that initial color. Dark tone. 
We're just going to put this all over the model. I do a 2 to 1 wash to water ratio here. And I get every bit, including the scales, the metallics, the matte grays, everything. With a watered down red, I come back and I just give a very light highlight straight down the middle of all of the spaces we've created between the necromancer cloak and the red. Give a little more care to the bigger open areas. You want to keep it thin so it retains the darkness, but just a little bit of a highlight. If you want, you can do a couple passes of this, but for the most part, we want to keep it that darker red. We're just bringing it back a bit. Clean up all the spikes with a little bit of that necromancer. Just the up facing bits, and I let the bottom part stay darker. Quick edge highlight with the brown, just to make sure we have a bit of wear on our leather straps and pouches, as well as the back of the boots. very tiny bit of the ruddy skin and I just highlight the cheeks. I come back with that uniform gray and I just very lightly get bits that I would think would catch the light a little bit more. This includes the bottom of the shield and the edge of the sword. I also give the spikes on the armor a teeny bit of a highlight. Grung green. I give a simple color to the scout fly cage. I'm going to clean up the base, but for now, I call that done. This model was actually a lot of fun. Uh, I was honestly worrying about it the most, since it seems to be one of the more smaller ones. I figured it'd be more difficult to put detail on here, but with the Rathalosis pattern, it was honestly a good time. If you liked the video, leave a comment, otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.